Hello everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Defy the Stars. Oh wait, did I do the thing? I did do the thing. <laughs> yes, I did do the thing. I'm a professional! They can't in fact hear me. Hello, Rezzy. So, we are here once again with Defy the Stars, tabletop RPG in the Expanse universe. We are sans a scarlet today because all of the snow landed on his house. And is still landing on his house. And is right? still it's landing on his house. He is currently desperately shoveling stuff away from and off his house. So he is unavailable today. So we might be doing some mental gymnastics to explain why Carter isn't Cartering. Um, I don't... Uh, Squirrel, I don't know if he spoke to you any, any more about what he wants, but I'm pretty sure he trusts you to just do whatever. So that basically... Works. So basically, we're going to get Carter a nice pink dress. Is what I'm hearing. Mm. I mean, it's it's rule number one: you never miss a meeting uh, mm -hmm. because that's how you get you, you get volunteered for things. I hear um, I hear Carter also wants to give us all of his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I heard that too. And his rifle and his power armor, mm -hmm. uh, or not power armor, uh, just the battle armor, whatever it is. Heavy armor, yeah. Heavy armor. You say all this as if Nigel hasn't already dibs all of it. That's that's <laughs> true. That's true. Just gone in with a label maker. And <laughs> the third drone has already taken it all. Um, so yeah, so it's been a while. It has been a while. Um, last time was what, six weeks ago now? I think. I don't uh, remember. It was, the, we, we missed two weeks, which means, yeah, six weeks. Yeah, I think the, the last time I showed, uh, that I had a login to Foundry for this game session was like 31 days ago, but that may just be that I popped in to check on something. It was a so, long time It's been ago. a while. It's been a while. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. There I've it is. Been, I've been I've been listening to too much Critical Role. Mm. Uh oh, I've got I've got yelling baby. One second. Baby was tired of bouncing knee and needed mommy instead. Mm. Anyway. anyway. To be fair, she wasn't yelling. She was just grumping hard. Yeah, but that's the precursor to yelling. Oh, there's drool all over my arm. Thanks, kiddo. <laughs> Ah, okay. It it should be known that that Carter is is listening. He's eavesdropping. Oh, dang it! I mean, uh -huh. hi, Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> he also has a T-shirt saying "Mars Forever" on the front, <laughs> and always turn on jetpacks on the back. <laughs> um, for anyone who doesn't know, Nab and I might sound a little different today because we both have the Rona. We are on the recovery side of it, so if there's some coughs that are our mute buttons don't catch. We apologize. It's it's just going to happen. Along with the normal caveat that baby noises will also probably occur. Um, as for what happened last time, I believe it was the space equivalent of a beach episode. And it was amazing. We, we all went shopping. And we all kind of got to know each other. Um, I know... Chester took Thomas out bag shopping. Thomas got the wrong bag. Chester got two bags so that Thomas can have <laughs> one that doesn't get searched every time by security. Um, and then June took Chester out clothes shopping and, and had a lot of fun there. And then we got chips. And the number one most important question of the entire series so far is, were the potatoes real? And they were, so. I, I guess, you know, we, I think we just won the first, the, the, the big bad was the chip shop, and I think we just, we beat that one. So, so now we're just kind of free to do whatever we want, because the potatoes were real. No. Um, I believe we are currently waiting on our ship inspection, and uh, something, the, the time is kind of the, That's happening kind of in the background, we, Okay, we kind of jumped ahead and I told you a bunch of stuff was happening and then we've sort of gone back in to fill in the time. Um, so that's probably in the works that you've been notified that, that it's coming. Um, but you've also been told kind of quietly along the side, don't worry about too much because your, some of your contacts have helped. Uh, well, your, yeah, I, you can call them your contacts now. 
yeah. um, have, have helped smooth the way. Uh, you are involved in a couple of different uh, attempts to uh, li- liquidize the, the assets that the ship had, had aboard, uh, namely the small uh, arsenal of MCRN weapons, armor, ammunition, um, what, whatever food rations haven't already been pillaged and plundered. Um, and uh, just dealing with communication lag, bouncing messages around, uh, or maybe trying to get the attention of those here on Tycho Station that yeah. might be interested, depending on what direction that you're leaning. Uh, try and we didn't steal an MCR and ship. We, Mm-mm. um, we don't know if it's MCRN. It, it, it's very likely it is. Uh, but we found it that way, and it's ours now. The paperwork says so. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a bit of a fill-in, I guess since it has been a while, uh, everybody is a. They were previously a passengers, crew, um, something of that nature aboard a the a cargo ship by name of uh, the Shakespeare, also affectionately known by by her crew as Big Bard. Uh, they came across a, a vessel, which you can see the diagram of there on the screen, uh, that was sitting cold. It wasn't broadcasting anything. Uh, the, the captain of the Shakespeare opted to investigate, uh, and sent the, the party over to, to have a look. They were all deemed to have some skill that might, uh, be helpful and, uh, was discovered that I think, yeah, the, the, there was some, some combat drones that, that managed to come online, uh, that did what combat drones do and defaulted to aggression and basically killed everybody on the ship and shut it down and were awaiting orders uh, until they were dispatched. So the ship has been salvaged. Uh, the the paperwork is in process uh, to to you know lay claim to it uh, officially, and just have to figure out where we're going from here. Yeah. Uh, so the party made their way to Tycho Station uh, to get this done, as well as uh, the, they found uh, not in any officially marked crates. Uh, all of them were very nondescript or or something of that nature. Uh, th- what would amount to a, a small MCRN uh, uh, armory worth of, of supplies that they have helped themselves to some portions of to squirrel away, uh, as well as there's still plenty left to... It would basically be enough funds that most people, after dividing up a sale of that size could, if not retire, at least live quite comfortably for a fair amount of time without really having to work. It, it would do a lot to set set people up for uh, a much easier way of, of uh, living out in... Uh, uh, what do they call it in the Expanse? Is it just the the verse? The uh, I mean, yeah, I mean the uh, system? They, they call it system or world. I mean, or worlds, or <clears throat> belt. There's whatever, whatever the sphere of the person. The black. The black. There you go. The black. I actually don't know if anyone ever actually says in the the expanse in the expanse. I think it's actually mm-hmm. very good at avoiding that roll credits uh, situation. Okay, uh, in, out in the black. So uh, it's just a matter of what to do with equipment of that kind, so as to not draw too much attention, so that people with more muscle than you have Thank come you and just that. you know file the the intergalactic dibs law against you. And just say we're taking this now. Um, so that play. there we go. Um, I think we ended off last time, uh, sort of towards the end of the day, uh, as some of the errands were completed. Um, and I think in do 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 do. Over the course of the evening, uh, uh, Carter would have gotten a, a message which I think he's generally made sure to uh, let folks know when he leaves the ship. I don't think he would have any reason this time, given the message that he got, to not. So I would say all of you had, you know, sort of the the equivalent of the sticky note on the the microwave uh, that Carter was going out. He'll be back later. Um, Okay. Um, And this is, so this is, we're starting after Chester and June have gotten back to the ship. After our after our chip shop and and clothing, yeah. okay. And potentially, if if there was nothing that evening still that anybody wanted to do, 
uh, we, we can time jump to the next morning okay. uh, as well. I mean, I don't have anything. I don't either, but I need to go AFK because the baby <laughs> needs me to change her. Okay. Well, I guess I guess we'll go to the next morning. Um, and and see what see what adventures the universe brings us here on Defy the Stars. Am I being dramatic enough? Is that dramatic enough? Is it good? I think it's just the right level. Just, just the right, the right level. level. Okay, good, good, sweet, sweet. Um, you oh, were also, supposed to cue the theme song. I don't have the theme song cued, so I've just got generic music playing in the background. Leave me alone. I'm an amateur, all right? <laughs> um, one last note. Uh, this is in Green Ronin's The Expanse adventure game engine. And if you type exclamation point Expanse, you can find a link to Green Ronin's stuff. Uh, specifically the the Expanse stuff. And it's it's really, really, really good. Do recommend. As mm -hmm. Squirrel has said before, it is worth it just for the art. You can see some yeah. of that art in the lower left corner of your screen there, rotating through. Um, and uh, as always... If anyone has any fan art, you can send it, and I can add it to that if you feel like it. I don't. There's no really need for it, but it's fun to have more stuff in there. Yep. And uh, shout out to the folks over at Green Renin for giving us permission to use their their assets on stream because uh, that was really cool of them. Uh, and they've been great folks to work with uh, as they've developed. The, they actually have uh, the system. Uh, for Foundry Virtual Tabletop, as well as currently a free, uh, it's what what you would get out of the their free beginner uh, adventure, uh, and they are working on providing uh, as a as a premium asset that can be purchased. Uh, it, it would basically put everything into Foundry that you would need in order to play all of the uh, like the stunts and the. Um, I forget the terminology I'm looking for of everything you would need. So like everything would be integrated and be very easy to play. Yeah. And I eagerly await when that is complete. Um, but folks over at green Ronin are awesome. That's the, the too long didn't read version. Yes. Yes, they are. And I still need to send that guy an email anyway. <laughs> Let us uh, away. Okay. Uh, so it next morning rolls around. Um, I'd say you, the appointment for the inspection is probably a little bit later uh, like mid morning, um, and so uh, I've forgotten my NPC's name. Haha, <laughs> uh, Rebecca, Rebecca is is moving about, kind of doing the. You know, she's a little self conscious about getting the ship uh, organized and ship shape and cleaned up. Um, so there, there's grumbling about like who left tools out, even though it was probably her, because yeah, <clears throat> that kind of thing. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, uh, I guess uh, I'll head up to the galley for breakfast. Easy okay. enough to do. Uh, there, there's, oh, what's the line? Protein and all the colors of the rainbow? Yep. Um, yep, having splurged on, I've spent quite a bit of money yesterday. Chester's going uh, cheap and just going to eat some of the ship store stuff. Yep, time time to, to cut back to the, the ramen and... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're having space top ramen right now. Space cup noodles. Nigel is going to uh, slink through the galley and swipe some kibble. <laughs> Nigel, you don't have to. You don't have to act like you're not allowed to take it. You can, you can just take it. This is our ship. Didn't I just do that? But you you did it all sneaky like. Still took it. Uh, well, it comes just... naturally to the belters, Thomas says as he emerges uh, from the hatchway. You know, that attitude's probably going to get you in trouble someday, Thomas. We're out here. Hey. We're in the belt. I mean... Say that like it hasn't already, and I'm still here. Right. Survivors. Dusters are going to find the. Dusters are going to find themselves missing some shoes soon. Hey, leave my shoes out of this. They're comfortable. So 
So what do we got left today? Uh, I know we got the inspection coming. I think we all got all, pretty much all of our shopping done. I think... We, Chester, Chester's looking at like a, a list of things that are in progress. <laughs> Which is definitely not RP me looking through my notes. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. uh has anyone checked the comms? I know we have a a message out to someone about maybe moving some of our cargo. Jester's wh while he asks that, Jester's gonna open his terminal interface with the ship and see if there are any messages. For the for the good news. Um, I guess that would be a nab question because I don't know if that correspondence was going directly, mm. like, uh, to to June's uh like private correspondence or if it was just being routed You're left right. open for I everybody to see. I don't remember, and she's not back yet. Yep. <laughs> da, 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 da. Hey. Commercial break. <laughs> I guess we're going to Do break early. Live. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to disable my, my Twitch workout stuff anyway. Hey, Shrouded. Ha, it's all disabled. Boo. Uh, uh, I yeah. have been I have been jonesing so hard for this. <laughs> and uh today has just been there's there's a blizzard. The baby's pooping herself. Everything's getting in the way. I just want to play tabletop. <laughs> hey Leprechaun King. Ah, uh, yeah. I've, unfortunately, I don't know anything else that we can do. I mean, I can, we can just josh around in the galley a little bit more, I guess, but I'm not very good yeah. at this RP thing yet. I think it's also a lack of practice if we have taken a, a significant break. Yeah, it's true. That too, yeah. Well, Nigel's going to curl up in one of the beds over here and uh, start working on a drone. You brought it up Oh, hang on. You brought that... Don't we have, a like, a workshop? Oh, we don't have a workshop, do we? Should you work on that in the galley? Isn't that... What are those things powered by? Isn't there, like, thruster? And Chester's looking nervously at the drones that were shooting at them not too long ago. Nigel just looks up, starts tinkering, and pulls off the top hatch and just looks at it and then pulls out an electrical cord and flings it at Chester's direction. Chester tries to catch it, but it hits him in the face. Ah! Thanks. I feel much safer now. Just put it on the counter. Nigel gets what's closest to a laugh and then sticks his head back inside the drone. Uh, while, while definitely not chuckling to himself, uh, Thomas is going to collect some, uh, some breakfast and a coffee and then slide it up to the cockpit and just do a systems check. June comes up the ladder, or sideways, or whatever. I don't know how we're docked. <laughs> up. Um, up. Okay. So she comes up, and she goes, Morning, fellas. How are we today? Uh, doing pretty well. Uh, Nigel is as happy as Nigel is, because he's throwing stuff at people and uh, ignoring everyone else. Oh, so rude. Okay. Good. <laughs> nice to see that happening. Normal is, yeah, normal is as normal does. Hi, Nigel. Nigel just waves with a uh, belt or hand signal. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, as she grabs uh, some food to eat, just kind of nibbles on it. 
Um, I found a a fantastic thing in my room. Uh, a, th- a thing. A thing. It's a it's a it's a notepad, basically. Um, it's a terminal. It's not mine. I don't know whose it is, but you know. And she she gives like a side eye to Nigel, and um, then she goes, "I have a little bit more information on our Sleeping Beauty in the, in the med bay." If anybody wants to know about that, is Thomas oh, up? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's up there. He, I I point up to the the ladder. He's playing spaceships and aliens again. I think. <laughs> okay, well, Thomas, if you want to hear anything else about this dude, you can come down here. I've got some more stuff. I've already talked to Carter. Uh, there's muffled, probably still chewing noises, and Thomas reemerges. Okay, so. I think the the main thing we we really wanted to know about this guy is he really likes noodles. Um, he has a noodle subscription, and it hasn't been canceled, so I hope we end up getting those, although I don't know if that will happen, but that'd be super cool if we did. Um, I like him already. Yeah, yeah. His last name is Dardanus, I think is how I pronounce this. Which is interesting because when I when I was looking for information on him, I got the last name Tolan, but maybe I just am not very good about searching for stuff, and I'll trust this more. Um, he is from Mars. His mother is a teacher. His father serves in the MCRN as a lieutenant commander, but I can't. I don't know anything about the actual assignment. <clears throat> Pardon me. Huh. Uh morning i have to clear my throat every morning um he also really likes obscure like belter anime and i don't know why that's important but i have it here Ugh. and let's see he hasn't been home in years he doesn't really have any affiliation with the mcrn so um besides his father and he had his mil- you know his obvious obvious mandatory stint several years ago but uh and it looks like He's been bouncing around from one cargo ship to another and no records exist in the last six months. So basically, as far as I can tell, this K Tolan slash Dardanus um, doesn't really have an affiliation with the MCRN. And so as far as I know, this cargo isn't legit as we thought. So... That's nice to kind of have that cemented. Um, I mean, there still there still could be some kind of cover. Uh, I don't know how they do things on Earth, but the MCRN is pretty good at being sneaky. Uh, and it could be, it could even be a separate uh, intelligence operation, not even related directly to the Navy, just using naval equipment. Okay. Well, as far as I can tell. Uh, he's just he was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time and well, he's a poor unfortunate soul yeah Chester's gonna pull out the terminal he's got slave to the auto dock and check up on poor K uh, is there, are there, does he see any signs of K waking up soon nope or... still stable uh, but still out of it man Still in this quasi coma. I've been, I've been uh, turning him and making sure he's not getting bed sores and everything. So he he is being taken care of, even though Chris constantly forgets he exists. Chester has not, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so at least at least a few times a day, Chester goes in there and cares for him. I just want to make sure that is that yep. is uh, that is known. Yep. The I'm yeah. Uh, ca- characters are often. Uh, they, they remember to do things that players don't. So yes. I, I, mm-hmm. Chester is much more responsible than I am. Remembers things a lot better, too. Um, I mean, do we want to try and find his people and just drop him somewhere? I, I don't know if we should just keep him on the ship. It, it just feels like a loose end we might not want to deal with if he wakes up and finds out that everyone he shipped with is dead and we're like oh by the way your ship is ours now should have called uh should have locked the door or something i guess i don't i don't know 
I mean, to I be mean, fair, they offered to take him and we said no. Yeah, but we all, I, I know that, but we also didn't know who he was. And now we've got a little bit of a better idea. Um. So do you want us to just find those no, guys no, and be like, by the way, we changed our minds. Take this. No, no, no. Out. Cause those, those were the, those were the med techs on here. Like, I don't, I wouldn't mind giving him to like his family. If those are actually his family. I don't know. Is there a way, Nigel, is there a way to send a message that can't be traced back to us, to to the people that June have, has found, being like, hey, do you know where Kay is? We're looking for him. We can, I don't know, tell him that there's a piece of land on Ganymede that he qualified. I don't know. Yes, if, if he I, I found these in... people. <laughs> she looks at, she looks at, uh, oh, she looks at him just kind of with a with a raised eyebrow. Yes, I definitely found these people. This is my information. I found it all on my own. Chester believes her. Nigel looks up and, and says, what you're asking for here is something that takes a little bit of time. I mean, we appear to have some. And I don't know. It's just, it's something, it's something that has been on my mind. I don't always only think about snacks. Well, uh, the only thing I would like to, the only thing I would like to point out is that if he is mixed up with black bag stuff, how many alarms are going to go off in whatever service is uh, controlling him when his family start getting pinged with messages like "We're looking for him." I don't know where he is. Could you tell me where he is? <sighs> I mean, the only other option is just to leave him somewhere or wait till oh. he wakes up and never let him leave the ship. Like, How about we just keep him aboard for now um, and we keep him alive because I think... Well, yes, of course. We're not going to kill him. Well, I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who him? I'm working with. Anyway, I think... Chester pouts a little bit. <laughs> I think that the... The best option for now is just to keep him in this chair and we'll keep an eye on him when he wakes up we'll figure out where to go from there because like i said and she looks back at her at her notes he hasn't been home for a long time i don't necessarily think he wants to go home at this point and there haven't been any records in his uh in his history at all in the past six months so i I don't know if he even wants to be found. So All if right. he got himself into a bad situation and we happen to be the bad situation now, it's better than death. And, and he can just suck it up. I mean, we're mostly nice people. I'm only nice when I need to be. Uh, okay. I have heard scary stories, but you're nice enough for compared to like space pirates. Or... She she flips the the side of her hair that she keeps long and then goes, "Oh, you're so sweet." I feel like I'm being patronized. No, no, not at all. By the way, uh, is there anything better on this ship than kibble? Yes. I mean, do you have some more of those tasty packages? I might. Chester says, thinking to the doing a mental inventory of the remaining few desserts that are stashed in his room and not in the galley where other people can get them. She got, so, and she knows that every time she wants a dessert, she asks him. And so she says, um, I'm not, th I'm not asking about desserts either. Um, uh, I don't want dessert for breakfast. I'm not a weirdo. Right. Only weirdos have desserts for breakfast. <laughs> she um, giggles to herself because she knew that that was what he was thinking. There's, uh, I mean, I moved some of the MREs up here. Look at the, the cabinet over to the left of where they keep all of the, there, there's the kibble. And then if you go two doors over, I put some of those MREs up in here. And she goes straight to it, opens it up and rifles through them. I mean, it's all going to be rehydrated stuff, but it's, I think some of it actually might once have been eggs instead of just retextured mushrooms. It's better than kibble. 
I don't know, some kibble's pretty good. He says, eating his noodles. His fake noodles. Yeah, the trick is to not go for the ones that pretend that they're actually some kind of food. You want to go for the ones that are sort of flavor 96. I like uh, flavor 45 myself. It's got kind of almost a curry-esque spice to it. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a good one. Then if you if you mix it with some hot water, it actually almost turns into curry. Although then it's this kind of weird gloop. It, 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 if you're sick, it's really good. June shakes her head and is thinking to herself that she never thought she'd miss Earth, but she misses Earth. Um, what about the, the guns and the other military hardware? Uh, do we have a lead on getting rid of that, June? I know you were reaching... Does Chester know that you were re reaching out about that? I think Chester knows. I don't know. Chester, I think I think knows because we all decided that we were going to talk right. to that other person. And and you're our contact with the outside world. Yeah, you're good at that. Yep, that's that's me. Um, she turns around. She's got a, a package in her in her hands. She rips it open with her teeth. Um, well, I did get a message back, uh, saying that they need to message me back later. So it's later. I haven't been able to check, uh, but they I know that my message got to them. So I'm just waiting to hear back again. Um, it was basically, uh, think of it like a voicemail. Like, uh, get back. We You reached us on the weekend and we'll get back to you on a work day type of a thing. So I'm just waiting. But they know about it. All right. Uh, and that was... Do I know who it was? I Like, I know who it was. But does Chester know who you reached out to? Yeah. We, okay, it was Lee They Garrett. all talked about it. Yeah. I'm almost positive we all talked about it as a crew, right? Yeah, we yeah. talked about... I, we talked about some stuff. Yeah, I just don't know how in-depth we went. But we're, there's going to be a lot of moments like this, chat. Sorry, where we don't know exactly what's going on because it's been several weeks since we've done any of this. Um, anyway, okay. Uh, well, if there's nothing in your inbox, I guess we just have kind of another free day. Um, have we noticed that Carter's gone yet? I mentioned that I already talked to him. Okay. Yeah, and I'd, I'd say somewhere there in the galley on something is the equivalent of the sticky note you know, uh, hanging on the microwave. Right, right. And I don't know exactly how much detail he would go into, at least letting you know that, that Carter has indeed left the, the ship temporarily. Carter okay. has left the bill. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do we need a... Uh... Wait. Jester looks around. Uh, probably need to ask Rebecca if the ship needs anything else or if we're just waiting on all the paperwork. I think we're just waiting on the paperwork. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting on uh on the last I think this is what it was. It was she they got back so that she could be there for the the actual uh going through the boxes. This right? is the She's next morning, so that would be Oh, it already happened. That okay. would be that would have already happened, but I think there's still a little bit of paperwork left. Because otherwise, we have nothing keeping us here other than Carter not being mm -hmm. on the ship. Which is fine. If Carter's not on the ship, we can go look for him, which would be kind of funny. Let's go look for him. <laughs> He's outside, shoveling the walkway. <laughs> Where is he? The GM doesn't even know. Um, <laughs> uh, but you were, uh, June, you would have had, like, if you're going through and looking through your messages, you would have one from Rebecca. Uh, that's basically detailing the from her perspective as a mechanic of the the parts and tools that she would like to have. Uh, it is right. extensive. Um, some might even say unnecessary uh, in some areas. But it, if yeah, uh, I think she was asked to to provide a list and you she have was been provided a list. Yeah, and I remember getting the list okay. and and talking it over with Carter, and it was like, yeah, of course we need to we need to buy these things and that would be the first order of business but we haven't sold any of the cargo and so gotcha. yep. we're waiting on 
the cell. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and and you... I would say that you do end up with a, a return message somewhere throughout the morning uh, that I will we have it typed up this time. You See, we give him six weeks and he doesn't have to ad-lib anything. Uh, you say that, but I definitely will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because that's just the way it works. And we're all a bunch of squirrels. Mm -hmm. But none of us are ninjas. That's why he's the GM. Come on. Discord cooperate. There we go. Okay. Uh, by the way, Discord was like, who is this person? Do you know this person? You just got a random message from a <laughs> random person. I don't <laughs> trust him. Out. Don't trust him. Okay. Um, so when she gets it, uh, she sends a, a general ring through the ship. She's kind of like, I got a message. If anybody wants to hear it, I'm going to be in the main mess hall. <laughs> so we, we all come back together? Unless there's we'll anything the other people wanted to do in the morning. I mean, Nigel, are you trying to actually get that working again? Is that the the idea? Nigel, Nigel look, glares up at Chester and sparks a couple of cables together. Is it going to spark you through the power cable at me? One of them. Chester puts the power cable into one of his many pockets. <laughs> While you're in there, Duster, do you want to bring me some snacks? Chester walks over to the cabinet, opens up kibble flavor 001 peanut butter, and hands it to him. Oh, Preacher, thank you so much. You're welcome, Nigel. <laughs> is everybody well, I, happy? Is everybody good? Everybody I, good? <laughs> I should ask, is Nigel working on one of the new drones, or is he actively repairing one of the ones that uh, you guys disabled when you first came aboard? Uh, I believe I'm working on one of the ones that we disabled. Ha, ah, okay. Um... And I do is know this that just like a, a idle, I'm tinkering just to tinker, or is Nigel actually looking to uh, get it repaired? Uh, at this moment, it is an idle tinker. Um, okay. Considering the leaning into downtime that we've had recently, we may consider an engineering-related bonus. Gotcha. Okie dokie. Doing the work. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you wanted to actively make a roll at this point, or if this was just a... He's just poking and prodding... Oh, oh no, there, there's another drone that we don't know about that I will keep an active role for. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, no, boy. no, she remembered June saw you. <laughs> but only June knows. Nobody else knows. Only mm -hmm. June knows. <laughs> yes. Anyway, because that's why she went and asked for information from him. Um, okay, anyway. So June's standing against a counter and she she's got her um her thing open and she says okay so this is the message back from uh our friendo it says this sounds like something more suited to an in-person discussion and i'm unable to travel to Tycho station at this time and i wouldn't ask you to travel all the way here without a firm deal but i have an idea that might prove to be mutually beneficial i have some cargo that was to be en route to Ganymede already, but the ship seems to have suffered a mechanical problem. The client has been understanding about the delay thus far, but that will not last long. If you would be agreeable to it, I can have the contract shifted to you. The fee I would owe you, plus the normal late notice fee, should compensate you for your travel expense. My cargo gets moved and you get here to discuss possibly longer deals let me know if you want and i'll get the paperwork started to have the cargo transferred and get the details for shipping forward forwarded to you um so that sounds good actually yeah i've um, never been again notes 
Any notes on what the cargo is? Because I don't end up with more guns in the yeah, cargo hold. Yeah, unfortunately, that was my only pause, too. I have no idea well, what it is. Uh, I know the GM told us that Lee Garrett is more, like, high-value, low-volume stuff. Yeah. But I don't know if Lee Garrett has told you that he is high-value, low-volume volume stuff. Uh, do we know that he's UPS red? Or um, is that something... Like the, we be that would have been some out. of the information uh, that that Captain Carroll had passed along. Okay, uh, what was that? That that's the kind of stuff that that Lee tends to work with. Um, occasionally towing the line of oh, this didn't I, it did it didn't get stamped. We have no idea how that happened. Quick, get it off the ship. Um, <laughs> you know, but that, not dealing with anything wouldn't normally have the reputation for dealing with anything uh, too terribly over the top. Oh, Ch and, and Chester's not thinking about that. He's, he's yeah. more thinking, uh, do we have enough room? Because the cargo hold is, while it's not mm. full full, there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff in it. Because it's, it's, you've said multiple times that there's a lot more than what's listed on the map. That there's there's yes. several crates in there. So I don't want to uh -huh. be like, I don't. yeah, we could do it, and then we, we can't go because we don't have enough room in the ship. Right. But it shouldn't be like that if he if he's UPS red. It's going to be more like a courier kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not more. I would guess not more than a, a ton or two of cargo. How do I make a new note? Uh, I think that's uh, in your character sheet. Yeah. Well, there are journal entries. There's the journal entry. I and I like it's like search journal, and I've got the one that I have that I oh, can't whoa. figure out I how to make, make one, one for you. Please do that. <laughs> uh, do 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 do. Yeah, I've been keeping all my notes on a notepad on my PC, but I can see the advantages to having it in the system itself. Yeah. Uh, we configure permissions. And... Thank you. And I, I can create those for uh, anybody that, that would want them. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's... I mean, it doesn't have to be right this second, but if you get some downtime while we are doing our things, then uh, I wouldn't mind one. Um, well, Chester kind of like sits up a little bit and goes, "I think, I think that's a good idea," because the whole, I mean, Captain uh, Captain Lewis told us that. You know, she kind of expects us to make a profit for her slash her uh, her employers because she she like co-owns the Bard, right? If I remember correctly, and and yeah, and so she helped work a deal to where we're working the ship for her and and her uh, her organization. So the sooner we get cargo and we're getting paid, the sooner we're being a good investment. Which also keeps us under the radar, because there's nothing more suspicious than a ship just sitting in a port, not doing anything. Especially if it's a small kind of freight, like fast freighter kind of thing, like what we've got, which is what we've got. Because a pleasure cruiser, this isn't. Well, I don't want to make any definitive decisions without our good friend Carter. So, uh, and I have no idea where he is, and I can't get in contact with him. At least he's not answering, because he does that, and ha that's super obnoxious, and he's done it for a long time. So, uh, we could go, like, parade around the station in search of him if you want, but... I'm, but... uh, well, I know Scarlet is watching. I think what we could do is send a message to Carter... <laughs> and find out if Carter wants us to look into this. And then we can... Uh, we don't have to leave because Carter's doing something today. Yes. Um, but we can at least go and m arrange the cargo to be brought if we're interested. Please still be there, Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I think Carter would want us to go. I think Scarlet would want us to go ahead with this. 
Well, yeah, but I don't want to assume that. And um, we have no idea what his character's up to anyway, so it's not yeah, like we can go anywhere true. without knowing what's going on. Exactly. Sure. I'm not planning to go anywhere, but I think this would be a good way to to pass the time somewhere other than the galley, you know? Nigel sends cryptic belt you load a message to Carter. <laughs> it's a text message, but it consists only of pictures of belt of hand signs. I thought Thomas was the one who sent emojis in his message. He is, yeah. he is. Thomas has the spaceship emojis. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I think it's a good idea. And uh I also don't know so I have this big old list of stuff from Rebecca. And we can't both... afford most of that. I know, I know, I know. So what I'm saying is, uh, once again, I don't know what Carter's up to. Carter might actually find a way for us to move at least some of this so that we can buy some of it. But um, I was thinking about even just kind of walking around and giving a listening ear in and hearing what I can about people maybe wanting either some of the food stuff or um, or other things and maybe being able to do an underhanded deal somewhere just to have it done and get some of this stuff because I don't necessarily want to go on a contracted deal without some of this stuff on board I mean remember how this message here and she she gestures she gestures to the um to the terminal and she goes you remember how it said that the other one had mechanical problems i don't want to be another one with mechanical problems and it sounds like that the the person that she's con or that lee is contracted with is getting a little bit antsy right but arranging new cargo transport isn't something that can be done in a matter of minutes we can at least uh look into it could we... What's the uh, message delay between Tycho and Ganymede? Uh, let me... Do, do, do. There is a chart for that. Travel time. Yes. I don't need that. Distance. I'm looking in the book right now. Did I bookmark it? Got travel time. There is a spot in the book that has a real nice two-page spread of the map. Yeah, I'm looking at all of the. It's all the travel time. I don't see. We'll try there. communication between locations. We're basically going from. Oh, Tycho's not too far from Mars out to Ganymede, which would be Jupiter. Eh, somewhere in the half hour range. That's not too bad. If I'm looking at this chart properly. I say I say we send a message saying that we're interested, but we have a couple things to take care of here first. And that if uh, uh, Mr. Garrett, Mr. Ms. I forget. <laughs> Them's, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Garrett. Um, if Mrs. Garrett, uh, wouldn't mind sending us a little bit further information, we could try to get things set up and that way we'll be ready to go if things work out. Just j because we need some further information, like how much cargo space would we need to be, uh, free because our cargo hold is rather full of some interesting i believe machine parts yes um maybe just a little bit more information we could be given and then while we wait for that we can i don't know something <laughs> it's difficult to to do this without one of the players mm -hmm. <laughs> tabletop challenges are real man I'm going to text Scarlet. Well, 
if everybody else is in agreement, then I can send a message to Lee and see if I don't know. I guess I could I could say that we are in agreement to accept the contract um to at least move those things and ask for just a little bit more time while we get our um our own things going. I don't know. Well, yeah, say we've got an agreement in principle, but we just need to work, know what it is we're actually shipping so we can yes. see if we can accommodate it. And then, uh, yeah. just, uh, so, uh, wow, my brain just died. Uh, Chester is going to pull out his terminal and without any emojis, with perfect grammar, is going to uh, type to Carter, hey, is it? Uh, would you explain the situation? Basically, he's gonna he's gonna be that guy that writes like a paragraph in a text message, <laughs> and is going to explain the situation to Carter, and ask, uh, "Is it? Uh, are you good with this?" Basically, um, please respond as soon as you can. And I'm going to send Scarlett a text message in real life, and hopefully, that will kind of <laughs> work, and give us some verisimilitude here. Well, I will send a message to Lee. Thanks, guys. June climbs down the ladder and goes to her room. Shut it, Candor. I think I want to hear Thomas or Nigel do something. <laughs> you guys haven't roleplayed. I want to see what you guys are doing. Uh, Nigel's roleplaying? Nigel is currently yeah, stuck with his other. head in a drone. So. <laughs> yeah, but what are you doing? You can't just poke it. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I literally can't. I threw a power conduit at, at Thomas earlier. I, say, I, Nigel. You threw it at me. If I chest yeah, it. And good yeah. luck getting it back. It's in my pocket now. That's okay. I didn't need it anyways. He wouldn't have thrown something he needed. Chester doesn't know that. <laughs> Chester thinks he's safe. Or he's being frustrating. For all Chester knows, he doesn't know that I'm listening to everything now that there's a bug in his pocket. <laughs> Chester's uh, terminal, just after he puts it in his pocket, goes beep, beep, beep. And... He looks at his he looks at his terminal and says, "Um." He says it's okay, uh, as he reads the response to his very well phrased and long message, and the one word "yeah" response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Carter's good with it, so we can accept that, and then because I'm sure whatever Carter's doing is not going to take that long. quite the assumption i don't know <laughs> okay so um june Welcome, no. Thank you for sends the a message to lee and it says um thank you very much Ms. garrett um for getting back to us we are interested in this mutually beneficial contract and we would like to accept it for you unfortunately we can't do that unless we know more about the cargo itself as our cargo hold is rather full at the moment would you please give us a little bit more information as to what cargo it is that we would be picking up and how much space it would take and then we can be underway potentially, potentially. and then she sends it well speaking of the cargo i think i'm gonna go uh, down and start shifting stuff around if I can. I'm assuming there's like some kind of lift equipment that is helps machine stuff around, move stuff around in the cargo hold, so that it doesn't all have to just be person powered. Or is that something I'd have to go to the dockmaster like, hey, can I borrow a forklift? Uh, 
think you are the uh, as the ex marine are our cargo. Uh, I'm not an ex marine. I was I was a medic in on a ship, not a marine. Are you sure? I could have I could have sworn it was. Uh, just sworn you said. Uh, uh, I, I knew you said medic, but I could have sworn you said marine corps. No. He was uh mm -hmm. he was a uh, he was a corpsman, but he was uh just straight navy. I mean, marines are technically just straight navy, you know what I mean? The MCRN, I I think the MCRN marines. Oh no, no, MMC they are different, aren't they? Yep. It is a different branch, which is kind of silly. Well, cuz they are also the army, really. Yeah, they're the army, yeah. There's no one to conquer on Mars. They've got to conquer people on other planets. Precisely. Um, uh, I mean, Ch Chester, Chester goes, is like, well, I mean, I can, I'm going to go downstairs and start shifting stuff around. Um, some of those crates are, are they, are there any of the crates actually as big as what's listed or what's shown on the, uh, on the map there, Squirrel, or are they smaller and more man portable? Uh, I would say the the largest ones that you have might take two people to move, but it's not like they're, you know, full 2,000 pound skids of stuff that you would need a forklift or a pallet jack or something, or the, the Expanse analog uh, I, I to think move this, around. I think the Expanse analogs actually are forklifts and pallet jacks. I Pro mean, I if a design so. works, it works, right? Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. Chester stands up, and he's like, well, I'm going to go downstairs and start rearranging the cargo bay, moving stuff uh, kind of back away from the doors uh, to make more usable room. And he... Uh, to try and uh, feel a little bit more just because every once in a while an older man or middle-aged man like uh, Chester wants to feel alive again and he tries to slide down the ladder to the cargo bay like he used to do when he was a young man aboard the uh, the, the ship he used to be on. Well, that sounds like a roll to me. <laughs> yep. Yes. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Question is, what uh, kind? Two broken legs. Uh, we're under one third G, right? That's what Tycho Station's at. Yep. I would uh, think so. Yes. Yeah, I can't imagine it'd be much more than that being a belted outpost. I don't think Chester would do this in one G. That would have been so funny. Jurassic <laughs> you snap, crackle, or pop? Which sound will the bones make? <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> Okay, I'll put myself here, and the result of the roll will have me. I'll, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it somewhere else. I just want to roll something, okay? I think this sounds like dexterity. Okay. Um, and while it's not quite, you're not in complete free fall. I think free fall would probably be what that would fall under. Okay, I don't have that focus, so it's just a straight dexterity. Yes. By the way, out of character, of course, I am so glad that you said dexterity, because as soon as we mentioned <laughs> the idea of him trying to slide down, a, a line from Mary Poppins <laughs> popped into my head <laughs> of death-defying feats of dexterity and skill, and I was just waiting for the dexterity and skill. Yep. Ooh. Oh. Eight. Um... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Could be worse. Could be worse. I'm gonna look at the stunts. I have a stun point. Hang on. Okay. Because <laughs> you can still use stunt points on a failed roll, right? I think so. Oh, and he's rolled a double as well. So that, that's this chain game. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes. Good call. Thank you. Why did you say that? <laughs> well, because, <laughs> because because some points could always be uh, spent on making uh, the results of uh, D's potential failure worse. <laughs> uh, 
I'm looking around and and where where the uh, thing stops on is I'm on <laughs> the 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 thing that shows all the conditions and I'm seeing uh, helpless, hindered, injured, prone, restrained, and wounded. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, wrong page. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> or right page. <laughs> Uh, where are the stunts? Uh, do, 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 do. Looks like the index is saying page 131. I'm going, I'm going to change Jeray's lyrics just a little bit to make it flow better, but... Bye bye to the joint of this guy. Maybe replacement someday later, but for now he'll just cry. <laughs> Nope. Well, it wasn't 131, that's for sure. That was just combat stunts. There's got to be just like regular dexterity stunts, right? Well, maybe it would. Hold on. This would be the sort of thing that you would normally attempt to do in the middle of a fight. So maybe... Wait, no, social stunts, interactions, investigation stunts. Ch oh, chase stunts. Maybe. Mm, that could be. No, that's not going to work. Um. Really? <laughs> Regain fourteen. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just saw that, but I don't know if that'll work because I haven't taken any damage yet. <laughs> yet. Yeah, I don't see anything. I don't see anything for like a like a. Dunt that would be that would help out with this. I think I'm about to just fall down the ladder. <laughs> Unless it gives me a flashback. <laughs> That's investigation. Where is there? Social. Oh, it's totally I'm totally impressing people right now. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything that'll work. Okay. Well, lay it on me, GM. What what is about to happen to poor Chester? <laughs> Uh, you go to to slide down, um, and I mean, to to put into reference uh, for folks watching, uh, we an eight lands right between a test difficulty of routine or easy. That that's so. This isn't a complete and total, you know, nat one fall on your face. Though the uh, the one on the drama die would indicate that whatever happens, it's probably going to be. Um, not the most brilliant looking. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. uh, all three of our boys just came up here and started singing to our daughter. I don't know what's happening, but it's adorable. <laughs> oh. Uh, I would say you start uh, sliding down uh, and, and, you sort of drop into that that groove where it's like, yeah, this is what it's supposed to be like. This this is going to work. Um, and then you look down uh, and you see Rebecca coming the other direction. Oh, no. Um, and she's not paying attention. Um, and and uh, the, the two of you, you know, collide. Uh, like, you, you, you attempt to, like, swing yourself aside um, a couple of floors down, uh, but it, it, it doesn't work. Um... So fortunately, you weren't moving quite fast enough to actually injure each other, uh, but but you do. It definitely is a bit. There's a, a surprise sort of. What what would be the best way to de describe it? Uh, a, a very surprised. Um, uh, uh, shout or or exclamation from from uh, Rebecca. Uh, I'm just as, I'm just imagining yeah. this sudden. 
uh, very quick burst of Belter invective. <laughs> mm, yeah, th there's probably a bit of that. Um, basically getting chewed out for for doing stupid things. So I ended up here. Kind of, I kind of like ditched to the side a little bit, and then I I I but I ended up like landing on Rebecca's head, basically. Kind kind of. Uh, you you both went to, um, like you you attempted to dodge. And that motion is what got Rebecca's attention, and you both went to juke in the same direction. Oh no! You know it's sort of the the uh, the uh, almost free fall version of when you're walking down a narrow hallway, and you go to there's somebody coming the other direction, and you both try to step the same way to get out of the the way of each other, and then you just sort of step back and forth and do that a few times. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah. And of course, and then just and Chester being Chester, he panics as he sees this happening, and is calling out, "Rebecca, look out!" completely silent on the way down and it's just <laughs> and then they, they mm -hmm. dodge back and forth so there's there's the impact i end up ditching out here i am I, i'm i'm sorry back i didn't i should have called out before trying that i i'm very embarrassed and i'm sorry are you all right she kind of gets up and you know, the, the universal, you know, brush yourself off after getting knocked over kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't think she really would know what to do in this situation either. She just kind of looks at you, um, gives like a shrug nod uh, in response to your question. <laughs> Uh, and then goes to continue on on the way up the the ladder. June's door opens slightly, and she like peers out with a quizzical look, and she goes, "Chester, you know that we only have one med station, and it's occupied, right?" I'm on the deck below. But you went right down the ladder. You fell down. <laughs> she hears it. Okay. Nigel picks up his head. And hears and feels the thump against the, the uh, engineering bay floor. <laughs> Looks at his bug in chest, his pocket, and goes, "Ah, dusters." Um, thoroughly embarrassed and feeling much older than he did before. Chester very slowly, one foot at a time climbs down the ladder into the cargo bay and starts dragging the cargo around. I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. Good rolls and bad. They're always fun. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Chester's going to spend the next, while, we're, while we wait for a response from Lee Garrett, uh, Chester's going to spend the time rearranging the cargo to maximize uh, room for possible additional cargo to be added with a mind to ship balancing and all that other stuff, which is stuff that he, uh, while it wasn't his job in the Navy, he understands fairly well because it's just basic uh, spacemanship, I guess. It'd be seamanship on the water, but a yeah, astronauticalness? I, I don't know. It, it would be something that you'd pick up on the periphery. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I would expect that anybody who's been on board a ship for more than a you know, a few months would pick this kind of stuff up, so. He is going to get to one that's a, the, the one with all the rifles in it, and it's a little too heavy for him. And he's going to send a text to Thomas. Uh, hey, Thomas. Could you give me a hand with the rifle case? I'm trying to scoot it a little bit farther away so we can... I need to get it just so, so we have the most amount of room for any possible cargo that we might be taking on. It's just a little bit too heavy for me to do on myself, and I don't want to... I don't want to go under a burn with uh, having thrown my back out or something, you know? But he says it... Uh, it's a text message, so it's all... It's, it's very well composed, because he spends, like, five minutes on it, making sure it's all good, and sends it, and then realizes that he has one typo in the middle of it. And it says, uh... <laughs> You know, don't want to, don't want to, it says, uh, he forgot the don't. It says, want to throw my back out instead of don't. 
but still asking for Thomas for help. Uh, Thomas sends a bandaged head emoji, a grumpy emoji, uh, but then says, fine, I'm on my way. Chester says, thanks. And <laughs> uh, Thomas gets this when he's in the cargo hold, looks at Chester with a, why do, I'm here, why have you sent this? And uh, gets just goes over to the box anyway and doesn't say anything. Uh, while you were waiting for uh, for him to come down, uh, Chester, go ahead and roll a perception, uh, for, or uh, yeah, a percept perception test for me. Oh, devils again! I am not rolling my best. <laughs> I even have a plus two to perception. Oh, man. Like I said, you get one die that rolls pretty well, and then the other two, they're really liking those ones. Uh-huh. Um... Okay. Good to know. It's going to blow up, isn't it? Yeah. Next is going to be roll a <laughs> dexterity check. <laughs> uh, so... You kind of stand there waiting, uh, and then Thomas comes down. All right, let's just shift it a little bit over here to the... Hang on, let me look at this thing. Because we're docked on the starboard side, right? Over here, this, um, is, this is where we're docked. Or we... No, wait, the cargo... Oh, wait, that's right. We've got... So this is the cargo airlock. So this is the mm -hmm. regular airlock down here. But we're yeah. docked on the starboard side, right? I believe so, yes, because the I think it was the other side that was being used as the uh, uh, makeshift morgue. Um, yeah, and you had that dealt with. So I'm I'm pulling, uh, we're, I've been pulling stuff basically to the center or biasing a little bit to the port side, um, while still leaving a, a central path along the middle here. That'll uh, allow people to go through, but I just want to scoot the crate a little bit over. Just so we have just that little bit. It's something that's not necessary, really. But Chester is trying to feel useful and trying to not uh, think about how embarrassed he still is for nearly killing Rebecca by sliding down the ladder because he's he was acting like a 14-year-old. You, yeah, you, you want to move the crate less than a foot? Kind of just... That kind of, uh, needs... A little bit more than that. It's more like... Okay. It's, 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 it's more like maybe a couple yards kind of thing. But oh, okay. It's really not a huge deal. It's just like... Where it is now, we're going to have to walk around it. If we move it a little bit, a little bit to the left, then we can walk right by it and it's not a big deal at all. Yep. Plus, we'll be closer to the ladder and we can grab the guns out when Thomas wants to look at them and, and, and stare at them and look at his reflection in the shiny, clean metal. All right, you ready? Uh, Thomas, Thomas, yeah. Thomas looks at uh, Chester and sort of thinking... It's really weird about guns. I, I, don't, I don't know what's up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say any of that out loud. <laughs> okay, one, two, and then we lift Three. to move it. Yes, that's the number that comes next. <laughs> uh, between the two of you, uh, the, it wouldn't require any sort of roll to get moved. Because um, like you said, it was just enough. Like, Chester probably could have done it on his own, but, you know, might have scraped up the deck plate a little bit doing it. Um, strained his back so uh, you, you get it moved uh, and it's probably around then uh, you get the notification that uh, there is somebody basically paging uh, requesting access uh, to the airlock oh uh, I head up to I think the inspector's here and I head up to the lock and uh, is there a window I can see through? Uh, the, there would be a window, but the the docking arm's a little long. But there'd be a camera, like okay. so. They're they're at the on the the Tyco side, and there's a bit of an arm that comes out. Um, so you wouldn't be looking directly, but there'd be a terminal there, and there'd be a camera that that you could tap into um, uh, okay. to see who it is. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the camera first, just to see if it looks like somebody who should be here. Yep, it's a, a couple of guys that are in 
um, like jumpsuits and you know the expanse version of like jumpsuit and high vis vests, hard okay. hats, uh, tool belts, that kind of thing. Okay, I'm gonna uh, ping June and with the voice com because I write text way too slowly. Say, hey, I think the inspectors are here. I'm gonna let them in. They're down in the cargo bay if you want to, or down at the airlock if you want to come down and uh, do do your thing. I don't know if you have to do anything. Okay. I uh I open the door and let them in. The, they both uh, enter. Uh, they they would give you their names. Uh, honestly, they're not important enough as NPCs to have names. Hello, NPC they, one and two. They have them. They're just yeah. Um, well, one of them's a little bit older. Uh, one of them's a little bit younger. Uh, uh, you would gather that it's it's probably something of like an apprentice sort of situation. Uh, where somebody's being shown the ropes. Hey, uh, okay. So our, uh, well, so are they? Am I showing? You guys want to see the cargo bay? Or are you here for the whole ship? I don't know. I'm not completely in the loop on the inspection, but uh, where do you need to go? Also, the person who knows the most about what's going on is coming down the ladder now. So. Yep, I'm on the way. Yep. Uh, they they tell you you know basically they're they're gonna do a. Uh, uh, inspection of the ship uh, itself. Um, they're not really too terribly interested in the cargo. Um, it's just making sure that before... It, it's basically the... If you're from a, a, a state in the U.S. that has a safety inspection before you license a vehicle, it's that. Uh, oh, making okay. sure the blinkers work and the wiper blades and you know the headlights turn on, the horn works. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um... That, that kind of thing. It's, it's more of a, a mechanical safety inspection... Uh, that has to get checked off. It's usually not taken too terribly seriously. Um, okay, well... And there's a lot of ships buzzing around that <laughs> shouldn't have passed, but did. Yeah. Uh, they they, uh, they have the guy look the other way on the emissions test. Um, Basically, yes. Uh, but this ship is much better than that because we've got Rebecca aboard. And speaking of Rebecca, I'm, uh, I'm going to swallow my pride and ping her as well and be like, hey, the uh, the safety inspectors are here if you want to stand over their shoulder. Make sure they don't touch anything. Because I know she's going to want to stand over their shoulder and make sure they don't touch anything. I've, I've gotten that uh, I've gotten that vibe from Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd get just like a thanks and then it cuts off. Uh, you would gather she's probably on her way down kind of remembers to himself. I think she's still upset with me. All right. Uh, so our engineer is going to be here and our... Uh... June, <laughs> and our what is June. your title? What is your title? <laughs> June, you kind of do everything. Do we Do we have a title? Our XO. Sometimes Captain, sometimes XO <laughs> will be here. This is, uh, this is June. Hello. Um, so yeah. Good luck. And I'm just going to go up the ladder and go to my quarters because I'm like, I, I just feel awkward. <laughs> Easy enough. Um, you, you do at some point pass Rebecca going back down the other direction. I very um, carefully get completely off of the ladder, <laughs> get all the way off. I like walk off to the side and let her pass, count to yep. 10, and then go up and then get into my room. So, J Junior, there, the, the inspectors again then introduce themselves and. You know, there, there's paperwork that would be exchanged and, you know, that, that uh, they would need you to sign before they start, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, uh, Rebecca then arrives and d doesn't say anything, just moves to kind of stand in a corner and watch and will proceed to follow these two poor guys around, um, looking over their shoulder every time they open a access panel or, or anything of that nature. Yeah, get him, Rebecca. So... But yeah, the, the, the inspection kind of gets started. Um, barring any problems, it shouldn't take too terribly long. Uh, are June, are you going to accompany them as well? Or are you just going to let Rebecca shepherd them? Um, June is going to follow at a distance. Okay. And let Rebecca be the hawk. Okay. And then you're basically you're there if the, the, they ask Rebecca a question and <laughs> Rebecca gets the deer in the headlights look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm there for for the support, and if I am needed to spin a tail or answer a question, I'm there. 
Rebecca, um, are you classified as human? No, I am a meat popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, I'm also walking around with these people in case a perception check might need to be rolled at, for any particular reason. <laughs> okay. Are you, so are you actually watching them to make sure they're not doing something shady? No, I'm just letting the DM know that if a perception, perception check ah. should be checked, I can Sounds kind of meta to me. <laughs> no, that's all right. I mean, sometimes pointing stuff like that out to me is, is helpful. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, the, the inspection, you know, starts. They, they head down to the engine room uh, or engineering area. And again, they kind of give a, a side look to... Uh, where there's now a, an acceleration chair that's been sort of not haphazardly, it's been done well, but it's very obviously not as not a, a stock option that there's an acceleration couch down here. Um, and like some notes get made, but you know, you, you gather that it's not something that they're going to, uh, uh, you know, fail you for. Um, I mean, like, it's, why it's wouldn't you put an like, acceleration hmm. couch to engineering? Like, that just seems like an oversight. I think it, Rebecca it, did the right thing there. Yes, I I, uh, uh, I would tend to agree, um, which is one of the reasons that they're not going to jump up and down about it, because I'm the one that did it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fair enough. But, uh, uh, yeah, they, they move through uh, and then start working their way up. Um I guess, what did Thomas do after uh, Chester broke away and folks had been moving around? Did he just go back to He pushes the crate out? back to the original position. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing as that would be. Um, I was thinking more about uh, going to one of the pristine drones that we found, um, seeing if uh, Thomas can figure out how to fire us up and take it out for a test spin, uh, partly to uh, keep himself busy and partly to just check that it, it'll talk to uh, the ship controls if we need it in the future. Oh gosh, it's going to try and kill us. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's it's not terribly difficult to figure out how to run it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of how big this thing is. I don't think they're that big. I think they're around like I want to say they're like around the size of a person's torso. If, it, mm -hmm. if they're the smaller yeah, ones. Well, I think there's the there's chunky. a couple of different sizes that I remember seeing in the limited amount of the the TV show that I watched. There there's uh, a couple. Like the ones the the Rossi has are mm -hmm. like they're big. They're like the size of a of like a golf cart, I would mm -hmm. guess. But like just small enough to fit through doors. But like big, lots of fuel, yeah. uh, some manipulators and, then, and stuff. I know there are some of them that are like what I would consider drone size, you know, little fans and yeah, for like around. for like inside so I, I, only. I mean, um, I mean, I'd assumed um, on the basis that they were moving around at, when the ship was depressurized and murdering people, there were more towards that for, at the sort of rossy end of the spectrum than uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like a uh, a little FPV drone's not going to be able to carry enough firepower to kill an entire crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think it's it's a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, it's not terribly difficult to get get started. Uh, while there's not exactly instructions uh, there, the interface is designed such that you know your your common uh, uh, trooper or soldier should be able to to handle it. So it's a relatively straightforward interface. Uh, so easy, but... so easy. Even a Martian can do it. Mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as it is, th this would be the first time because it's piloting, but it's a different kind of piloting. Yeah. So go ahead and roll a piloting test for me. So that's dexterity piloting. Um, and we'll just basically see how you do. Ooh, okay. More doubles. <laughs> the ship explodes. Like <laughs> well, let's see. We did just hit ten. Oh boy. Um, let's see. I da, 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 da. Now, when that happens, so is the churn thing? Is that something we're supposed to be looking at? 
Because it, it's unclear to me if that's just like a GM thing. No, you guys, you guys can like it's it's something that like if if I were doing this at a table, it would be open and out, and then like the marker would move. It would be something you as players are aware of. Um, uh, and mechanically, it's it's something that's there. As the story progresses, there's always a chance that, that things are going to start cranking up. Uh, 10 and 20, roll a d6. And consult uh, the table. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there's the table. Okay. Oh, jeez. I will do this out here. Okay. Oh boy. That was a five, so no effect. Thank goodness. Booyah. <laughs> I wasn't sweating. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the drone comes alive uh, and just starts fair, killing Thomas. The the minor the the minor stuff that would pop up is not terribly. Yeah. Um, it, it would be a bit of an inconvenience, but yeah. I mean the 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 community gif is probably very well might be accurate for for uh, <laughs> their Skylar. Um so just just be aware that's what happens when you miss sessions. Um things get set this on fire. This is your fault, Scarlet. <laughs> and the cat meows. Uh, but uh yeah. Uh okay, it you get it up and running. It's a little bit wobbly. Um it's one of those things Thomas is used to when you're piloting a ship, even the big ones, there's a, a the ability to like feel and respond to what the ship is doing mm -hmm. that you don't have when you're piloting a drone. Um, you're just you're solely relying on what you see, even though the drone is out in front of you. Um, and so it's it's uh, it 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 floats around a little bit, but it doesn't take you too long before you get it under control. Uh, a 13 is the 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 number on a challenging uh test so you did rather well um yay and you had four stunt points if there was anything that you wanted to do with them uh i think i can i can think of maybe it does a bit roll just i was gonna say to, to, yeah practice doing some flips uh. <laughs> okay that yeah i think for for four four of those i think you'd be able to once you get a feel for it uh you're you're just kind of buzzing it around um you know kind of doing what limited amount of space you have you're kind of doing some tricks and and getting it to to roll and uh sort of mock almost like you would be mock a dog fighting with it um in my mind thomas is making like machine gun noises as it flies around with his mouth <laughs> Pew, 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 pew. Deca, deca, deca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the, the, the inspectors sort of step back and look um, as they, they come in. Uh, there are a couple of panels that they want to access here in the, the cargo bay. Yes. Um, that they, they move towards. Uh, and while they're doing that, June, do go ahead and roll a perception. Uh, it would... Perception seeing, probably? Find the mystery June. Find it. Oh, oh my gosh, more again. doubles. I have a lot of stunt points. Yep. Um So you you uh you're keeping an eye on the inspectors a little bit. Um, but there, there definitely, there's a lot of like technical jargon going back and forth. Um, and when that's being done, those questions, Rebecca has no problem fielding. Uh, there are some of the others that, that like, there's an attempt to make small talk as they originally got started and as they've gone through this part of the ship. Uh, these guys have figured out at this point, that's not going to work with Rebecca. Uh, so they've kind of let that go and they're just sticking to the, the, uh, the technical stuff. Um, so that's happening over in one corner. Thomas is flying the drone around a little bit, uh, and your eye gets drawn to, um, it's the, the crate that had, 
uh, you know, the ration, the rations in it that's kind of really been plundered at this point. Um, and uh, um, as a bit of a reminder, that one did have a false bottom in it with with uh, an item that hasn't really been investigated. Uh, yes. So you find your, your eye drawn to that and as a little bit of a GM reminder, it occurs to you that there might be something that you haven't investigated as thoroughly as you could have. Okay. Um, she makes a mental note and mm -hmm. keeps on keeping. Yep. Uh, inspection continues. Uh, they, they come up. Uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot that they check in the the uh, personal rooms. Uh, so they go from there to the galley and then on up to the, the cockpit. The whole uh, inspection would probably take an hour and a half or so. Um, and the report provides, you know, a couple of different things. Um, for the most part, though, Rebecca seems pleased um, that, that a ship on directly under her care and responsibility uh, was given a clean bill of health. Um, uh, the, the inspectors head out, uh, and Rebecca, in as best as you can tell, a good mood, uh, heads back down to the engine bay to continue doing whatever it is Rebecca does during the day. Before she goes, Juniper just goes, thanks for being awesome, Rebecca, and just tented, like, not tentatively, actually. She, like, puts her fist out for a fist bump, and if she doesn't get one, then it won't bother her, but she wants to at least offer it. <laughs> hmm. Rebecca just decks June. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, Rebecca will stand there for a second. Um, almost as if she's processing the, the situation. And then you just kind of get a, um, a little bit of a fist bump back. Um, June immediately goes when she gets it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rebecca will stand there for another minute while she's still processing this, and then goes to the, the ladder and goes to leave. Yep. June's, June isn't rushing her or anything. She just lets her do her thing and process it. But yep. she feels good about allowing and getting a social interaction with Rebecca, and um, and that just makes her happy. Okay, and I would say, uh, as as you get done, uh, you also then get the ping that you have a re uh, response message uh, about the the cargo deal, uh, and you get a. It specifically pointed out that it's not the actual contract, but it's an example kind of boilerplate cargo contract that Lee uses, uh, as well as the like bill of lading information for. Like the size, the weight, and, and the the kind of stuff that you were asking about um, to verify, along with a note to just basically let me know uh, when when you know for certain, so we can get started. Um, okay, so um, she looks at it, um, looks around. And I'm assuming that the dimensions and everything are up to par, and we not we don't have to worry about anything yet. Yeah, it's the it's it's not even like a full, um, you know, skid or pallet worth of stuff. It's just a couple of of uh, very similar to some of the 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 crates that you've got. Um, depending on well, the, with the weights listed, uh, they'd probably you'd probably need a couple of people to move them. It would be difficult uh, even under. Uh, well, at one third G, one person would probably be able to move them. They'd just be just big enough and to be a little awkward to do with one person. Okay. Uh, but you would certainly have enough room. It's not going to throw off uh, your your um, weight distribution of the ship or anything like that. Okay. So she she eyes it, looks at it, looks around, um, just kind of nods to herself. Um. And she'll get back to it later. Now she's going to go to the crate with rations with a false bottom um, and uh, walk on over to it and investigate. So she's going to take take the things out that are in there and mm -hmm. put them down and attempt to open that 
false bottom. Uh, false bottom opens relatively easy. Like it's it's you would gather relying on camouflage as opposed to any other tricky security systems. Um, and it uh, uh, contained uh, underneath is a um, memory core or it, it, it the, the expanse version of like a good sized uh, external hard drive uh, kind of thing nestled in there uh, that, that has very definite MCRN markings and serial numbers and stuff on it. It's just a hard drive, but it's got like neon glowy bits on it because it's the expanse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, she, so there's nothing else in it. It's just this drive, right? Yep. Okay. So she takes it out, pockets it, um, replaces the, the bottom and puts everything back in there, closes the crate and, oh, um, climbs back up the ladder and goes into her room no. oh no <laughs> she's not she's not going to do anything with it right now mm -hmm. but she's going to put it uh in an, in a safe spot for now <coughs> pardon me and um Stuff she's going to send her mattress no <coughs> she's going to send a message to um lee <clears throat> That basically just says um, that seems doable, and we uh, we will happily do that for you. Um, and if you could give us the details as to where to go and uh, fetch this cargo, that would be appreciated. Okay. Um, uh, send it off. I have about an hour turnaround time, best case. So really interesting to RP with communication lag. Not something that I normally do, because uh, usually you either can't communicate that long distance like that, or it's magic. And, and it's so everything's instantaneous, instantaneous yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, or some sort of sci-fi magic or actual magic, whatever you call it. So. Yeah, that is one of the things. I mean, that's what one of the things I love about the expanse is the uh, the attention to the laws of the universe. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't you can't just send an email from Earth to Ganymede and be like, oh yeah, they'll get back to me in a second here. It's like, yep. no, it's it's gonna be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes it's gonna take an hour or two, and then they got to figure everything else, and it's gonna take another hour or two to get back. Not counting yep. any kind of processing has to go through in the middle. Yeah, it's really cool. So somewhere uh, out there is is somebody that that manages to respond to messages before they've been sent, just because of the way, quote like local time zones line up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um. So after she sends that, she's gonna take the the drive and just kind of look at it for a second and um, and debate with herself what to do, and then she decides that she's going to call everybody together again, and make it known that she's found it um and that way the people who can best deal with it or have better opinions about it um can decide what to do with it now uh remind me i didn't play um i know chester and thomas found this did we i think we told everybody about it didn't we uh, yeah, the, the false yeah. bottom. Yeah, yeah. The, that was essentially what the perception check was was about. Was just as a memory jog. Okay. I know there's okay. been a lot happening. Um. So. So she does. She calls. She she sends out a, a shipwide intercom and just says, "I, uh, hey you guys, I opened up that false bottom, in in the thing that uh, Chester and Thomas found." And I, there's something in it. And so if you guys all want to meet me. I think you in... know about it and what it is already. Yeah. Yeah. We, it you, was... you already looked at the thing. Yeah. I thought the, you, just... you, you know, okay. there it's commonly known that there was a drive, but it was one of Hop those. Under... Oh, close. We'll get we to don't want to mess with that type of a thing. Okay. Got um, it. We have other things going on, and we need to put this back where we found it. Right. I knew that. I knew that there were other things going on. And that's why it stayed there. But I didn't realize yep. we'd we'd even. I must have been away when that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, or it's just been a long time. I mean. Yeah. Yes. Um, but okay. So June says, "Hey, I have this this memory thing from that crate. 
and I kind of want to talk about it. Can we all meet together and discuss what to do with it? Because I don't want to end the hold anymore. Oh, boy. So, hope she goes. Okay. Chester's rummaging so. for the be uh, his, uh, what did I say, type 45? Flavor 45 kibble? <laughs> I think it's what I don't know. <laughs> Grabs some flavor for 45 kibble, two packets, passes one to Thomas, goes to the corner. Um, June takes out the the drive, just kind of holds it in her hand. Goes, so, obviously, we have to do something with this. It can't just sit here. Don't know what it is. Don't know if we want to necessarily access it. Um, so... Anybody here besides Nigel, she gives him a, a like a little side eye, have any experience with things like this that want to weigh in as to what to do? I mean, uh, Thomas shifts uncomfortably. <laughs> I really think we shouldn't do anything with that. There's, if it is some kind of Martian intelligence thing there's going to be so many protections on it it could very well have some kind of trojan that sends out a signal as soon as it's attached to a system i'm i still kind of want to give it back to mars but i don't want it to be traced back to us because i'm afraid that we might be implicated somehow but i i don't i mean there's a reason we kind of stuffed it back in because thomas and i are both of the opinion that we just don't want to deal with it Okay. I suppose it's a bit like the. Um, no. Sorry, go ahead. Nope, you go ahead. I say, I suppose it's a bit of a bit of the same situation as our uh, guest in the bed bay, is that, on the one hand, anything we do to try and sort it out may make the situation worse, um, but perhaps sitting with it in the cargo hold forever isn't an option. Yeah, that's a good point. Um... I mean, I suppose Nigel, we... go ahead. Go ahead. Nigel is just going to gesture towards our our duster pilot and say, "Duster, uh, duster spec ops pilot over there probably knows more about that than I think we know." Chester looks over uh, at Thomas. You were spec ops? No. <laughs> ah. Uh, but what I do know is that that's the kind of memory core you would have on a capital ship or installation I wouldn't know any of the technical details but I know there's probably all kinds of outer intrusion software on there for instance if you plugged it into the ship it would probably worm its way to the comms system and start quietly broadcasting hey Hi, some people here yeah hmm. um I would recommend if we're going to plug it into anything, we have a separate computer system which is not plugged into anything at all, and then we throw it in the recycler once we're done. That would be wise, I think. And if we do that, we never found it. We never saw mm -hmm. it because I was I was referring to the computer system we plugged it into. Yeah, that it would just go throw it straight in the cycler. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, any well, the that drive is gonna, it's gonna register that it's been accessed, almost certainly. But if we have the drive, then it doesn't matter because nobody will see it, right? Right. But and it, also, we won't be able if, to give it back. And say, if we're boarded by a, a Martian spec ops team, they're going to take one look at uh, Nigel's resume and assume that he's just found a way around the countermeasures anyway. So we're still screwed. That's a good point. Y'all are rude. So we just let Nigel have his way with it then. Uh, uh, Dusters okay. wants a belt of load to help. Don't pretend like you don't want to see what's on the drive. Didn't say I didn't. Didn't say you did either. <laughs> Nigel, do you have any type of system that is completely... Uh, that is something that we could get rid of or do you have access to something like that? Nigel holds up the drone that he's been working on. Ooh. That doesn't have a commu doesn't that have a communicate 
be, 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 be. He doesn't say that. He actually says it properly the first time <laughs> because he's not me. That doesn't have any communication system built. I mean, isn't it necessarily communications? It's it's remote control. Nigel just jams his, ha- his hand inside of the drone and rips out the antenna console. You are... Throws that, Chester. How? Can we stop throwing things? That'd be great. I, I'm pretty sure that Rebecca's going to make you fix all those dings eventually. Chester I was waiting for a, a fleck of metal to get sucked into the air conditioning and we will suffocate. Chester ties the uh, the power cord around this newest piece into a little bow as tightly as he can and puts it into a larger pocket. Glares at Nigel. If we're done throwing things at me, what you're saying is you can use the drone as some kind of uh, air-gapped computer to try and access a drive. I'm assuming that's what... That, I'm assuming throwing communications equipment at my face means I can do this in Belter. With a little help from uh, Rebecca, I think we can probably make that work. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming that <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca be up silently too, came yeah. up here, yeah. Oh, yeah. She she would have been the last one there. Um and, and just kind of moved off to the, the side to stand in a corner and just has been looking back and forth between people as, as you've been talking. Is she is she anywhere close to where Chester's sitting? Um, she'd probably, she would have moved to wherever there were not people. Okay. So she'd probably be in that general corner kind of okay. standing there. Nigel still needs a face. Someone give Nigel a face. Or um, wait, wait, oh, did I grab the wrong <laughs> that's token? That's Nigel, yeah. I grabbed the wrong token. My apologies. Rebecca's in space outside the hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while... So at the mention of... Uh, or Before we talk about Rebecca helping, uh, Chester went over, pulled the parts out of the pocket that has been thrown in his face, says, are these useful at all to you? Like, offer, <laughs> offers the, the tied in a knot cables to Rebecca in case she wants them for spare parts or something because Jester's tired of carrying them and they're poking him like right under the nipple into the into the chest from the sharp metal and it's really uncomfortable <laughs> June without without stopping her absent study of the, of the memory core goes oh I thought you were making a puppet uh, but Rebecca would stand there for a second and then just like pick them up and she's a mechanic. She's got even more pockets than you do. Yeah. Uh, and, and tucks them away. Okay, cool. Chester walks back to his seat and sits down. All right. Well, Rebecca, if you're willing, I think we'll give this thing a poke. Um, we should double, triple, quadruple check that drone can't talk to anything before we even, like, let those two things touch. I know that's not how technology works, but you can't be too careful. Is Rebecca willing to to help? Like, she, she obviously understands the, the mm-hmm. gravity of the situation. Uh, yeah, um... Of course, knowing her, it's just an engineering challenge, and she's like, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah, uh, she, she'd she look over uh, at, at Nigel uh, and kind of give one, one of her somewhat trademark like shrugs at this point. Um, probably figure something out. Well, then, let's go see if we can hook up some uh, Belta data. Uh, the, and with that, Rebecca will start moving towards the ladder uh, and head down to the, the engineering space to basically collect whatever tools she might need. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, Thomas is going to plant himself uh, 
so we can see whatever screen that uh, Nigel and Rebecca will be using, sort of, you know, exuding management vibes. Sort of, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, so, but where where is it that you're wanting to work on this? Right there in the the um, um, the the mess area, or you're gonna. Uh, I'm thinking they would probably just spread drone parts across the mess area table because there's no workshop. Okay. Uh, Re Rebecca will return with uh, basically her toolkit, um, which is not as suited to the more delicate work uh, with the drone, but she does have some stuff that will work. Um, So I think, though, as you guys get started on that, this is a good place to take a quick break. As yes. we are part of the way in. So, Yeah, we got about an hour and ten minutes left of the stream, so it's a good time for gotcha. us to go grab, yep. some, uh, grab some water. I'm probably going to brew some tea as my throat is getting more throaty. Yep, um, I need to refill the, my tankard of water. I, uh, from the, some of the stuff that Kander said in chat, I definitely don't want him to ever GM anything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Um, basically, yeah. He, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I don't. You do. I don't know what you mean at all. Communication role, see if he garbles what he said or not. Also, you you would, I think, I think <laughs> you would be good at playing, uh, being a hard mode GM, but hard mode in the hilarious way, I think, Kander, <laughs> is what it would be. I'm going to switch some stuff around in my tabletop recording real quick. Uh, I want to go grab some tea, I think. I'm going to have a look and figure out why the SE server crashed. Okay. That sounds like fun. It's not unlike what uh, Nigel's doing. Ah, uh, when life imitates art. Okay, well, the intermission screen is up. I'm going to leave chat open so that people can hear. Um, while we're chatting, but everybody will be back in just a few moments. Uh, it's it's our break, so we're gonna go do the bio stuff, get drinks, everything else, blow noses, put babies in cribs, put babies in cribs. Um, but we will be back in just a few minutes. Here, I have returned. Just to let everyone know. Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Refilled my own boilers. Speaking of boilers, I've retrieved the bread dough. Oh, nice. Did you try Nab's method with the with the oven and the boiling water? Uh, I haven't yet because we were about to we were about to sit down to this when I saw the, the message. Oh, okay, fair enough. It works very it well. Is, hmm. So yes, and it has been uh, instead on top of the uh, central heating boiler. <laughs> yeah, I think proofing containers are one of those things you can use, but they're not strictly necessary. Like I'm pretty sure yeah, lots it's... of bread was baked for a long time before anybody oh, yeah, made a special definitely. container. It's more the fact that uh, you know, we, we keep the house relatively cold because we're all hardy souls. Um, yeah, so it, I have noticed that uh, until I put the sourdough starter on top of the uh, central heating as well, <laughs> it was uh, um, a bit lackluster, shall we say. <laughs> Fair no, I do the same thing. I keep the house pretty cool during the winter, so yeah, I run into the same problem with baked goods like that. Oh, Endroth was telling us to compliment June's haircut. That's not that's as close as Nab found to a picture of June. She has done some character art of June, but uh, we didn't get that translated over into an actual icon. So she just found a person's face that looks very much like what she imagines June to look like. Although June's in her late twenties, and that person appears to be like twenty-two. 
you, you age slower in space, it's fine. It's true. I, actually, people do look younger in space in low gravity and in zero-g because the uh, the fluids kind of fill out the, the face a little bit more. You end up looking like you have a little bit more fat on your face, but uh, wrinkles aren't as severe. Not that I have any of those yet, but soon. Uh-huh. My wrinkles are mostly on my hands. My poor hands. I'm sure Squirrel's hands look a lot like mine. Just beat up from working. My, mine are generally okay, but I've, I tend to wear gloves more often than not. Uh, but I, I, there's a couple of scars on my knuckles that I look at and go, where'd those come from? Yeah. Or I get home at the end of the day going, huh, ah, I bashed my knuckles. I didn't even know I did that. My my hands have like a have like a story to tell when I when I look at the various scars and things on. I remember most of them. The 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 few that are pretty uh prominent are uh I can remember those scars pretty well. Also, hello Alien. Alien already has wrinkles. But that's because he's a bucket. Are we sure those are wrinkles and not just the drain of the wood? It might be. I don't know. Ah, he's been lurking. I hope everyone's been enjoying today's episode. It's it's a little... We've had, we had kind of a rough start just because we haven't done it in a while and Scarlet is, you know, dealing with the entire, like, year's worth of precipitation that has fallen on his house today. Mm-hmm. And last night, but uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, snow joke. Indeed, not. Ugh. Hey, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> my my normal response to somebody getting snow is that's a really good place for it. But I I generally don't wish an entire winter's worth of snow on somebody all at once. Yeah, I want to say it was like I wouldn't want to deal with it. I want to say the forecast that he got. I don't know how much he actually ended up got. How, gotting getting. I'm so good at words today. Um, but it was like between 24 and 30 inches overnight. That's a lot of snow. Still getting it, he says in chat. Uh huh. So it's the never ending shovel job for him today, trying to keep the driveway clear enough to be able to do things. He got a frosty reset. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I, ch- I, ca- I caught it. I chuckled at it. That all was... right. Are we all uh, we all ready to come back to it? I am. All right. I think so. Well, then the intermission is officially over. And now we can get back to poking the thing that's probably going to put a price on all of our heads. Because we totally don't have one already. I was going to say, or a higher price in some cases. Yeah. I don't know why you got to call Nigel out like that. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, you say that like you're joking. I was actually thinking of Nigel when, when I said it. <laughs> Carter, too, probably. I'm sure there's some places <laughs> he can't go. He says he's dealing with something. What he's really doing is just, he just went out drinking with a bunch of old OPA buddies. And just <laughs> didn't want to invite any of us. Which is good, he, he because Chester a... didn't do well last time. <laughs> he had a calamitous incident with a uh, cinnamon donut stand. <laughs> no, because the station didn't explode. <laughs> that we know of. Has yeah. anybody looked outside recently? That's true, that's true. Well, we still got spin gravity, so it's alright. He says he doesn't want to be brisk, but he's got to go. Oh, well done, Scarlet. Well done. All right. I don't know. I don't know if he has to go. I haven't seen him disconnect from the Space Engineer server yet. Scarlet. Scarlet. Called out. Ooh. He was telling me it was because the stuff he's had to do was really intermittent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's probably just staying logged in rather than just bouncing in and out every 
10 minutes from the from the chat <laughs> so it's fine this is working out he shouldn't yeah, sure. feel bad no <laughs> how dare he try to help his family <laughs> goodness goodness navarine i know okay Chester's going to get in the corner as far away from the drive as possible, um, <laughs> making sure that he's wow, out Tanner. of any any sight line of any of the cameras <laughs> on the drone, and uh, just going to sit back and watch. He's going to pull out his little collected religious works and start reading uh, just passages from various things just to pass the time because he feels like it's going to take a while. But he wants to be present for it. Because if everything's about to explode, he kind of wants to know. <laughs> Can I use my intuition perception to figure out if something bad is going to happen or not? I don't think that's how it works. I would really love to, though. <laughs> if we were playing d and D, I I think so. <laughs> you could, like, you could, like, cast a spell. But since this is very much real world stuff, you, I think the worst you can do is, like, I've got a bad feeling about right, this. Right, yeah. <laughs> this was your idea, by the way, so it's your fault. I didn't do it by myself in the room. You were thinking about it. I was waiting for you to, like, just plug your terminal in and then it's like a, no. <laughs> a, a, a Martian destroyer just shows up like, all right, <laughs> hands up, out of the pool. <laughs> we need to talk. And, and yeah, oh, we, we would she out. be great at talking? <laughs> look we at the up... airlock window. We're just staring into the barrel of a uh, Donager's <laughs> uh, railgun. Mm -hmm. she, she's so great at talking. We end up switching ships and sailing off in like a Sirocco. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make you a deal. <laughs> Scarlet says he's been grieving between shoveling trips and painting ships bright pink. All right, wonderful. Now we know what, what color he wants to paint the good news. All right. So, Nigel has taken a drone and strewn all of its parts across a table, a dining room table. Just refreshing my memory on advanced tests really quick. Oh, boy. Getting excited. I feel like this yep. is more of an advanced test. Jester is keep no. in mind that uh, that uh, that my dice rolls are even better than uh, Chester's. Just Chester is now uh, looking through his collection of uh, various prayers to various deities, seeing if there's anything specifically regarding computers. There isn't, by the way, and he knows that, but it's worth a shot. There's a brief reference to one that you think exists, but it turns out to be uh, uh, like ancient Earth fiction of some sort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Is, what is this clang? Um... <laughs> uh... Makes a note. Okay, so an advanced test. Um, what we'll do is there is a. Um, the individual tests get rolled, but what we're looking for is the total number off of the drama die is what's counting towards the success for the advanced test. Uh, so as an example, um, the success threshold could be, you know, anywhere between, you know, five and uh, um, they list formidable as 25. Uh, and so what would happen is there's the difficulty for the test itself uh, that you roll, uh, which is probably going to be like an engineering intelligence or, you know, something of that nature. And when you succeed on that, whatever number comes up on the drama die is what's added to the total. And each of those rolls account for a period of time passing, uh, that I'll, I'll, that would fit whatever it is we're, we're looking at. Um, so I would think this is a relatively challenging test. Uh, to get this thing hooked up in such a way that you're going to keep it isolated from being able to communicate, since that's one of your goals. Um, and you're not exactly using 
um, parts for things in the way that they were originally manufactured and intended to. Um, so that'll put a success threshold of 15. And then the time increment. Doo, 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 doo. Told there would be no math. Uh, I'm sorry, you've been GMing for how many years? I was told there would be no math. <laughs> Something I want to raise that may be yep. a boon or not. Um, Nigel does have Maker Novice. Okay, so I have to refresh my memory on exactly what that does. Uh, the description, the flavor text I have is you can use a manufacturing focus to make any item with the appropriate tools and access to a workshop. See make or repair under interludes in chapter five for details. The, I would assume that with some uh, engineering experience from our friend Rebecca, that could lend us in the direction of having some supportingness to help us in this situation. Did we set up a workshop? No, that's on the list, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, did, that, we didn't do that. that yet. Yeah, we haven't done that, but I would think that, you know, this is the, in, a skill in being able to make things work out of other things. True enough. That's what I was doing wrong. Okay, so each test will take about 30 minutes to conclude. Okay. Uh, and the threshold is set at 15. And I figure we will probably bounce back and forth, because uh, I don't think, at least I didn't see... Anything specific uh, when it comes to tests as far as providing assistance, although I'm sure it's in there and I'm just not finding it and I don't remember reading it. Um, so since uh, we have two people involved. Can we have more than two people? I mean, I think, I mean, we're all in the room. So if, yeah. if there's a way for us to help, you can ask us and we can... I'm sure there's a role we can come up with that will work. Uh, yeah, it's then it's more a matter of, of how folks go about um, being involved. Okay. Don't, don't look at me. I'm the cleric slash paladin, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on. When, when things go wrong, you smite. That's... <laughs> Okay, so how how exactly would uh, uh, do you think Thomas and Rebecca would go about beginning? Well, Nigel uh, would gesture at at uh, or excuse at me, Rebecca. Nigel. I'm sorry, and and would need to find a way of connecting the drive to the drone's internals in order to boot it up. Assuming also keeping in mind that Nigel ripped out the communications array out of this drone. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at Rebecca, wondering if Rebecca has a engineering um, in, insight on this particular drone and connective connectivity issue. Okay. She can probably basically start piecing some things together uh, using the parts available uh, to get where you want to go. So let's see. In my mind's eye, she pulls the power cable out and Chester's like, yes, it was useful. <laughs> um, oh, that's not going to account for... Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, let me... That was supposed to change there, and that did not account for her engineering uh, focus. Cow, so that's actually amazing. a 20. Um, so Re Rebecca will sit down 
uh, and she just starts taking different bits and pieces um, and starts putting them together. Uh, she has a little uh, like portable soldering iron station uh, that, that she's starting to uh, essentially from the pieces provided build a computer that is standalone. Um, so that'll be a, a six on the the marker. Okay. Yeah, now, by so the this, way, this computer everyone, is this functioning is now, this which would mean here. that Nigel should be able to try attempting to hack it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so you you she's got the, the the this bare bones computer. Like there's a little screen that she probably I don't think the drone would have had one. So she it was something that she pulled out from stuff that she had using the bits and then there's wires and clips going across getting it connected um you know very specifically there's nothing that can, can communicate with the outside world um so you would uh, sit down and you're basically ready to actually make a crack at um looking to see you know fire this thing up and find out what's potentially on the drive remember the password Excellent. is swordfish uh, Always. So it'll be... Do, 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 do. Probably an intelligence test of some sort. If you have a, a focus you would want to apply. I do have an intelligence technology focus. I think that would fit. Excellent. I will roll that. Assuming I remember how to roll things. Oh, look, more doubles. Oh, boy. <laughs> so much fun. Just ease that on up to 12. We're going to blow up the ship before okay, Carter gets back. So that's back. a... The 14 is a success, so that's a 2. So we're up to 8. Okay. Uh, so you, you get it up and running... Um, and, and you're kind of, you're, you're now attempting to use, uh, the, the, the code available to you to interact with this drive. And it's not really, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to describe this when I don't know what I'm talking about. It, it's, uh, it's, it's parsing the information very, very slowly, or it's, mm. uh, I also very imagine... difficult to, to pull apart. <laughs> I also well, the, 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 the way I'm looking well. at it is you basically have the the like the software that would have been on the drone that you're working with, which is designed to do one thing really, really well, and that's control a drone. Um, and while the drones you can upgrade and you could put like you could plug hard drives into them, you gather that the information on the hard drive isn't set up in a way that the the software on the drone would intuitively know how to communicate with. And so you're you're kind of building those bridges, uh, and the 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 software side of things directly in order to make that happen. Like you you register it's there, but it's not letting you actually access and do anything with it. Right. Um, At this point, I my only other option I think would be to keep trying an intelligence technology role, unless I had someone with an intelligence focus. Uh, attempt making a similar role. I mean, I I have intelligence science, but it's theology. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. I could, but yes. I also have the improvisation. I do have the improvisation. Our power. Uh, our, our I, uh, Nigel would uh, would gesture at our other duster friend who doesn't totally know anything at all about how a spec ops team would show up and know exactly what they're looking for. <laughs> of course not. And would deny it if you have a, it's just a possible reason. Um, he does have intelligence research. So if I want to see if I can uh, space Google the manual. <laughs> <laughs> or fi find the readme file in the mm -hmm. in the file system. I mean, I guess both Chester and Thomas would be at least passingly familiar with MCRN file structures. Not necessarily the code itself, but at least maybe figure out how to navigate something if... Uh, 
Like you can't you can't pull up the whole tree at once, but they're familiar enough with the tree that maybe we could figure something out that way. I don't know. I'm imagining the drone on the screen. It's like run software update, and then there's like a box that says select firmware, and then it's just a bunch of information from the hard drive. <laughs> Is something like that. Something just really, really weird looking. Um. <sighs> Wait a minute. So, Chester is uh, as as you're doing this, and uh, have you made have you made frustrated noises about how it's it's the drone wasn't designed for this, and it's not reading the file structures or anything like that, Nigel. Uh, Nigel would have been uh, visibly trying various options to try and get it open. But yes, it would have been like... Mm. So, Chester is reading his collected works of scripture on not his terminal, but on a... It's actually a... Like I said, he had it. But it's it's like it's like another tablet. I mean, I guess it does have communication systems, but... Uh, no, that's a bad idea. Never mind. Never mind. It's got Bluetooth. We're not going to plug that into it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's um, not do that. Uh, I could I could try to poke around the file structures and see if I can see uh, any kind of pattern that would lead me to like a a readme file or even like a uh, what is this? What is it from? Because we don't even know that. You, uh, you open Clippy. It looks like you're trying to break into a super Basically. secret Martian drive. Would you like any help with that? <laughs> Something like that. But no, I mean, just just knowing what the drive is and what it's called could give us some information. So I could I could roll an intelligence, just a straight intelligence check. That's all I can do um, to see if I can find something like that, if that works. We... The other thought I have is that Nigel does have perception searching, and if Nigel's already accessing the drive but not really finding anything, could do that. So my my question is, I know in some systems, if the same character rolls, d does the same advanced test twice in a row, the the uh, the test score or the target score increases. Is that the case in this system too? Squirrel? I don't believe so. This is one I of those things so. like one person could be doing all of these um, and kind of rolling the same test every time. Uh, I also like leaving it open and letting everybody have an opportunity to be involved. And, you know, it, it's a group effort. It's not just, you know, two people sitting in a corner uh, poking buttons and, and soldering wires. Uh, but if that's the direction that everybody thinks, well, that makes most sense is just let the engineers handle it. Uh, we yeah, can do that too. That, that but does I, I like leaving it sense, open. But... I, I don't know if there's like, if there's, a, if there's some way that Chester or Thomas can help with our familiar familiarity with, with Martian naval computer systems, just from using them, then we're here to help. Other than that, I think this is in Nigel's kind of in Nigel's ballpark here. This is yeah, Nigel's and Rebecca's. I don't think I can help at all. I don't think June. You can, can help at all. Flirt with the computer and make it. Work yeah, to help I was us. gonna say I can look really good. <laughs> I can look really good standing in a corner. She, <laughs> she just she puts on like the nerd glasses, unbuttons the top button of her shirt, and just sits in front of it and starts having people take pictures of her. Look, I'm a gamer now. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Continue. Anyway, moving on. Um, Nigel, again, gesturing at, uh, Thomas is, is going to say, does they're going to look at this or no? Mm. I'm just going to, going to shrug and, and lean over and see if anything, uh, jumps out at him. Um, probably offers a few tips sort of, oh, did you know that, uh, actually we, we use pin seven, not pin five for the ground, uh, sort of weird little things like that that might be of any use? I'm not sure what test that would be, really. But is there uh, an assistant slash kind of advantage system in this? So that's think... what I was originally looking for. Um, and if it's there, I'm not seeing it. 
because we have basic tests. That's something we might want to... We'll, we'll explore that, and maybe we homebrew something if it doesn't exist Those in the system tests. already. Because that would be a perfect compliment, would be yeah. having the, the research bonus apply mm -hmm. to a Nigel yeah. role or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Because Nigel can use intelligence technology as, you know, um, instead of research or investigation. Yeah. And like, uh, Chester has an intelligence of three, which is one of the highest among the group, I think. Um, and it'd be interesting if, like, somehow apply somebody, if we could figure out a way to apply somebody else's stats to something. I don't know. I don't know. Some way to some way to help. I got all this brain power, but all I can use it for is researching stuff about religions. <laughs> and, and a flat uh, uh, intelligence test without a focus is would be fine. Um, or if if there's something there that you wanted to, uh, you, you said you had improvisation because you are you guys are kind of literally making this up as you go along. Yeah. Um, it also and, be and essentially what I'm doing is once you guys tell me what it is that you're doing uh, and we have an idea of, of what the test is uh, that that's when I'm setting the difficulty all of these don't have a set rigid oh, difficulty on each individual okay. role to see if you succeed all right because um, I'm, I'm open to crazy harebrain out there ideas right it's just the difficulty the test yeah. the difficulty so like, on the test might be if i said higher. chester and mashes the keyboard trying to get it to do something i can roll on that but that it'd be like a a 20 difficulty or something 22 difficulty to if, succeed if you're just just gonna sit there and you know password one password two yeah. password three you know you might eventually brute force your way through could even be something a bit out of the box like uh you know you ask nigel to to explain the problem and through your through your asking questions maybe nigel thinks of something you haven't thought of before i don't know yeah that, that would work it could be more like that uh as you're describing the problems you're running into to somebody else to bounce ideas off of them and then they put something back Uh, Chester shares his extensive knowledge of Martian operating system shortcuts with uh, with <laughs> Nigel. Sure. Um, with 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 that uh, knowledge of operating system shortcuts, could Nigel communicate to the drive to trick it into thinking through deception? that it's actually <laughs> hooked up to a ship. You're lying um, to the computer. I love it. I just I just want to say that I have communication skill 3 with a focus in deception. Yeah, but I don't I don't know if deception can hmm. We haven't heard I mean, yet. I'm into it. I, Is it I a like strong I like AI I like the direction you're thinking. <laughs> Um, there are no strong AIs in the expanse. <laughs> we've, we've already strapped the data core to the inside of a drone that has been splayed open across a dining uh -huh. room table. <laughs> um, yeah, but why not? Uh, the, the difficulty might be up there a little bit. Um, Intelligence but it, deception. The, instead of... Uh, the, you're basically doubling back to, okay, what can I do... Uh, to try to make what I'm working with on the drone look more like what the drive is looking for. Uh, and maybe if we tick some of those boxes for it, we'll make some progress. Yes. Yeah, I'm into it. Go for it. Okay. I love it. So am I the rolling or are you rolling? <laughs> I would, I would, if I have the option to have June roll, I would have June roll instead. So with her, hang on with her skill in paperwork and ship systems. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say anything. It's just communication deception. I it know. Does... Yeah, I know. But we have to make it make sense in the narrative, though. But do we? Do it's, we not like you're, it's not like you're walking up to the computer, to the hard drive, looking at For it sure. and being like, you're now plugged into the uh, MCRN 
No, so my Something my guess my guess is that there is a way there is some sort of communication because it's if it's a drone, then communication has to be there somewhere, right? You have to communicate with the drone. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a drone like but, today's drones, though, right? There's no communication yeah. there. I think. I think for for me, or for Nigel, I would I would say Nigel is is attempting to hack this drone, mm -hmm. and knows that it has to communicate. The drone. The drone is isn't actually not the issue. The drive is the issue. The drive is encrypted, and it's looking for something in particular to let it be unencrypted. It's looking for a key. The communication from the drone needs to provide that nigel being an interesting person has communication deception but knows that there's another person in the room who <laughs> would think of this a little bit differently and might be a little bit better at deceiving a person and or device you're you're not so you're not lying to the drive you're lying to the person that programmed whatever that programmed the drive <laughs> That, that's that's base that's what I got out of that and I'm I'm still into it I'm right. 100 percent right. on board for this okay so June um, is now going to lie to a hard drive so with my <laughs> so with my role uh there's no way to apply the deception oh wait yes there is I checked the yeah, little you focus check it, box yeah. okay technology by analogy works in Star Trek so it's going to work for us I mean, if if somewhere else in the black somebody managed to shoot a, a door panel and open the door, I don't see why this isn't. <laughs> that's much true. Away. That's true. Okay, that's a that's a six. Uh, that's a fourteen. That that's a yeah. Uh, but between June's experience in uh. uh Carefully carrying a conversation in the direction that she wants it to go, uh, and revealing only information that she would want revealed, and and Nigel translating that into his knowledge of of computer systems, uh, you start to work your way through, um, essentially giving the drive what it's looking for, starting to to get it unlocked. So okay, that so, puts us. So a here's what's happening third. in my head: <laughs> is Nigel is like he stops in his tinkering for a second like looks up at june and says what would you do if somebody said this to you and you wanted it to go this way and she would she would give give him a line and he would translate so like he's like, like translating the into the computer that's funny yeah. mm -hmm. i love it i love it um so that that puts our counter at 14 of 15 uh and we're an hour and a half in uh, somewhere in here, um, I would note, June, you get a notification that you get the response back from, from Lee, okay. um, providing the, uh, like the, the full, like actual, uh, contract, uh, that you can go through, uh, to be okay. digitally signed and returned, uh, as well as providing you the information on, um, uh, like where you would need to go and that basically the authorization to, move the cargo from one place to the other so you could okay. take it on board. Um, uh, but we will need at, at least one more roll. So so I think it... Go ahead. ahead. Okay. Um, so are we into the file system yet? Like, can can we access the files themselves? You're... you're... You, still ha you still haven't been able to access any of the information... Uh, but you're getting in close enough to start seeing what you're, how can I describe this? What you're looking at. Um, and like what, what you, essentially to, you might be able to hazard a guess of exactly what it is that's on the drive that you're attempting to access, but you haven't been able to actually get any specific concrete evidence. Cause that's a, you're at 14 out of 15. You're almost there. Chester. Um, uh, password one, two, three, four. <laughs> Chester is going to go, I wonder, I know when I've served aboard, I, I think I wrote the name of the ship down somewhere, but I forgot the ship that Chester served on. I know that a lot of the crew had put in various ways to make things easier, and it was always a file system kind of named after some kind of food, just to let them basically, like, 
You ever been to workplace and it doesn't let you, uh, you can't just like browse the internet. It doesn't let you. But if you open up Firefox in like administrator mode or, or a different browser, you can. But so they lock down Firefox. So you just change the name of Firefox to something else and it lets you run it because it's uh, because computers are stupid that way. This is definitely not something that has happened to me in real life. Um, so Chester, Chester remembers that and starts looking for something like that um, or, or giving, giving that advice over Nigel's shoulder. Uh, and then I can make an intelligence roll to see if we see something and not necessarily like necessarily if it's like named after a food or whatever, but see if there's something that says it's a file name, but it doesn't make sense with the extension or something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Thirteen. Okay. That roll isn't as bad. It's not as bad. That's above average. <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd say as you go working through, um, Nigel's sort of tabbing through. The, the screen is pretty small, so all of you are kind of huddled around the, the table here uh, and, and just, you know, tabbing through where it's just lists of, of uh, you know, the, the file headings and, and some of the architecture of what you're looking at for. Uh, and, and Chester, you see that, that one thing that sort of an open secret amongst the, the MCRN that, that folks... You know, nothing that would really violate any sort of of whatever passes for uh, cybersecurity, um, you know, policies that they have. But it kind of does. Uh, it's and, and it's you find basically that an unlocked web door. browser. It's basically an unlocked browser, uh -huh. which can read the files on the drive. But yeah. It's not supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not supposed to be there, but it's it kind of gets added. Um, like it, every ship that anybody serves on, it's there, even though it's not supposed to be. Um, and so you don't know if it's just everybody, somebody somewhere on every ship knows how to do it. Or somebody at the shipyard somewhere is like, this is stupid. We're just putting this in. And then everything that comes off the line ends up with it. I, I feel like um, it's one person in a shipyard put it in and then nobody saw it. And so it's just been copied to every drive in the fleet. Yeah, it's just, it's just... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's there, and it all gets dumped off. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, and you you get it open, uh, and there, there's this pause where, like, the screen dims down, um, and nothing happens. And then one of the fans that uh, uh, Rebecca had salvaged to you know kind of keep some of this stuff uh, you know cool revs up, um, and on the screen displayed very very small. Uh, you just, the, the text, um, welcome to operation dust glass is displayed. And then there's a, a blinking cursor, you know, waiting for, um, a response. Oh. Wow. Well. Uh, Thomas leans over and hits enter. Okay. Um, it will th there's again a pause which you gather is uh whatever it's attempting to do is pushing the 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 hardware that's been cobbled together um way further than this stuff was ever designed to go uh in the 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 sheer um performance that it's attempting to request from it um and Hmm. I am tempted because I just looked down at the clock and saw what time it is. This feels like a good spot to end for this session. As, <laughs> as fans start worrying up even further, the little hourglass icon comes up. Um, I feel like this is a good cliffhanger and I like oh, it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> My You've, my have, fingernails are literally in my mouth right now. The, uh, <laughs> the we have a we have a drone that's on a table with all these worrying fans that thinks it's a Dodger class battleship <laughs> spinning servos <laughs> trying to turn guns. Oh. To be continued, da, da, da. oh man, the most adorable little combat battleship drone. Yep. Oh my gosh. Um, 
dust Donnie glass. The drone. This drone is our blueberry cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Save that drone. This is the third drone. Actually, this is the second one, right? The one that got smashed apart. Or no, this is the third one. This is the one you found that had like broken itself or something, right? Or is this one of the ones uh, that shot up? Yeah. It's either that or it's the one that was down in engineering. I think at one point I mentioned I was trying to grab that one. Yeah, yeah. he pocketed one. I mean, all three would have been available to get like pulled together. Um, so. <laughs> it, it, it could be any of them. Holding the magic blue smoke. Carter is going to come back to the ship and have absolutely oh, no idea what just happened. I really want to start right at this moment next time with Carter popping up like, hey, I'm back. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the community gif of coming back in with the pizza and everything's on fire is 100% accurate. What's going on? Operation Dust Glass. That, that's a cool. Did you come up with that name? Uh, well, between me and some, uh, uh, a little bit of name generator action. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> that I like fun. it. I like it. I like it. Oh man. Yeah. I'm okay with, I'm okay with ending there a little early. Cause I mean, I know mm -hmm. Nap and I are still a little under the weather. Um, and so help me if any of you have to deal with like family or sickness next, <laughs> next time. <laughs> I guess before I laugh and say anything, let me double check the calendar. I oh boy. Clear. Oh boy. Well, no, the, I get the, it. you want to know the really frustrating thing? Mm. Uh, for, for the last session that, that I was the reason, uh, we actually then ended up not having family Christmas and I didn't find uh. out till like right before and I had done no prep. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's totally fine. Yeah. That's not on you. It snowed and certain elements of my family, it didn't even snow that much. Not, not, not anything like what Scarlet's dealing with. Uh, but certain elements of the family didn't want to get out on the road, so we postponed till Monday. Uh huh. Yeah, I I'm was. I'm glad you didn't mm -hmm. share that with me the day of, because I would have been like super sad. But... I I was I was <laughs> plenty salty myself. That's um, all right. It's so... all right. It's all good. We got to play today, so. Yes. Uh, let's um... see. The twelfth. I should be fine. All yes, right. that would be the next one. Candor's not going on a holiday. Nope. A scarlet snow is becoming a unit of measure. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many, how many snows? Three scarlets. Oof. That's a lot of scarlets. I, I, I think at three scarlets of snow, you're probably, your house is buried. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Having met scarlet, if it's a measure of height, very much so, yes. <laughs> scarlet is a giant of a man. Anyway, I'm going to push this button here that says thanks for watching. And I'm going to thank everybody for watching. This has been lots of fun. Um, it was a little shorter today, which is fine. Because, as you can hear, my voice is already starting to revert to... Uh, <laughs> um, so, we'll pick this up again in two weeks. Hopefully. And uh, we'll all be feeling better. And we should have a full cast... And I do think that ending here uh, so that we can have a full cast so everybody gets to play for this, I'm sure, very exciting lore dump that's about to happen. <laughs> and fi finding out what Carter's been up to for the last He just day. shows up with like half the OPA into the ship. <laughs> hey, I got some friends. Thomas dives over the screen so they can't see anything. <laughs> The uh, my favorite part about Carter is how he is. He's got the Belter Patois with a Boston accent. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> it is the best. Ah oh, man. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, this will be up on the YouTube channel in a few days. I forgot to record it, so I'm gonna have to download it from Twitch because oh, I'm stupid because I haven't done it for six weeks. But we'll do that. Um, but yeah, thanks always to everybody for showing up, for watching. Thank you, Squirrel, for all the work you put into this. Yeah. You're very welcome. Hey, thank you, Squirrel. Um, everybody go ahead and follow uh, underscore ninja underscore squirrel on Twitch so we can convince him to stream other games of his because he is a very talented GM and is quite entertaining and has dastardly twisted ideas that need to be shared with the world. 
Unfortunately, my internet is, I think, still probably the bottleneck there. That would be, it would be painful for everybody involved. Hashtag fund squirrels Starlink. I mean, <laughs> I, I would just like to say, I mean, I, I never thought I was going to get into streaming and then D twisted my arm and then Final and Scarlet ganged up on me as well. So you, you, you haven't got a hope. You're, you're in our sights now, squirrel. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. Let me just run this speed test right quick. Or, or at least like record them and put them on YouTube. I think would be good. Anyway, we're going to stop bullying you live on stream. I'm going to end the stream. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks everybody. We're going to go for a raid for somebody. If somebody's online, um, thanks for watching and we will see you all in a couple weeks for this. <laughs>